Um, I'm going to talk about the food water shelter project today and uh, with particular attention to the food part of the project. Uh, food water shelter is a uh, near sustainable urban homestead project and uh, with respect to being near sustainable that with uh, thinking about the food part and we're going to try and do on-site gardens and uh, have chickens for eggs and fish in our aquaponics system and we should be able to um, be self-reliant for an occupant load of eight in our project uh, with the only food that we need to bring in from off-site would be wheat and uh, of course wheat is easy to store and, and it's relatively inexpensive and it's pretty complete nutritionally and uh, and, and on, on site gardens will be uh, maybe 30 or 40 percent of our food, and it'll consist of vegetables, herbs, and roots. And uh, of course, the, the chicken eggs and, and the fish will be 20 or 30 percent. And then generally, the wheat will be about 50 to 60 percent, kind of on the average. And uh, Anyway, we're going to go over those things today and, and uh, we're going to walk around the site, take a look at it on the gardens and the aquaponics uh, greenhouse. And also I'm going to do a real quick demonstration of how we do our sprouted wheat. And uh, I have um, basically stored wheat. We buy our wheat in buckets. Uh, I get it from um, Idaho and it's a hard white spring wheat and we uh, just take a rough measure of about that much dry measure put it in a container and I'm not too concerned about proportioning because there's only one ingredient and there's our wheat and we cover it with water this container will be our bread two days from now. Um, this is our bread for tomorrow. And it's been soaking since about this time yesterday. And the soak time varies with temperature and time of the year. And currently I've been soaking about uh, 24 hours. But in the summertime, it, it starts becoming less and less. So anyway, this is tomorrow's bread. This is today's bread. And um, I'm not sure how detailed the photo is going to be, but um, the length of the sprout is about optimum when it's about half to two thirds the length of the grain. And I would say these are probably closer to half. They could go a hair more, but not much more. It's, it's almost perfect. And um, we're going to go ahead and, and take this and process it. This machine takes the grain and shears it or kind of smears it. It's a real tight tolerance and uh, it makes a real smooth uh, process dough. And this ring is like a kneading ring, which takes the, the sprout of wheat, actually goes through a series of holes, rolls a few times and comes out a slot in the bottom. And it's basically all the kneading that the dough will need. Once it comes out, uh, all it's left to do is just a little bit more kneading and, and to ball it up into the shape that it's going to cook. We're down to the last little bit. We've been uh, grinding for about 15 minutes. It's kind of an everyday thing. And uh, here's another view of how long the sprouts are. 
and you're just about perfect. The kneading ring is twisting on me. bit of help with the finger. That's the consistency of the dough. I kneaded it a small amount and now I'm uh, shaping it. And I'm placing it on a disc and this is my oven. The oven is a um, uh, 12 volt, three amp. So it's basically cooking bread with the same amount of energy as a 36 watt light bulb. Um, it works on 12 volts which means it works directly off of a solar panel, off a 12 volt battery, solar battery. Uh, right now I have it on an inverter in my office. I uh, plan to shortly have it on a solar panel. I typically cover the oven to hold the heat in since it's such a low energy oven. And in about three hours, it'll be bread. This is our grain that I've uh, been soaking. And this is uh, tomorrow's bread and how we drain it. We, we put it in a large uh, strainer, rinse out the container, and then rinse in the grain. Bring it back in the container. Cover it and come back to it tomorrow. Here we are at the site uh, at, at Food Water Shelter. And this is the garden gate. And we're standing in the main courtyard right now, heading into the garden. Um, have a little bit of symbolism on my garden gate. The sun, the wind, the rain, and the soil. Four elements of sustainability. We have some winter crops growing. We have some lettuce and kale, some spinach. Our oregano is still doing real well. And our trees are apple, uh, grapefruit, lemon, fig. I have some grapes growing, a lot of blackberries growing, carrots. Still have my tomato cages standing here. We lost those about a month ago. This is our cordwood potting shed, still under construction, but acting in storage right now. We have our compost pits here. This part of the potting shed is gonna be like a greenhouse, hot house to start seeds and uh, keep plants doing a few weeks in the uh, winter time that we need to. In this area, down next to our 40,000 gallon cistern, we're building a lean-to greenhouse uh, primary function would be for aquaponics. That, that's raising fish in the tanks uh, and, and cycling by dosing the dirty water, the, the fish dirt in the water into the pea gravel filled barrels where we'll grow uh, tomatoes and peppers and herbs. And in the beds next to the cistern will be going summertime crops in the wintertime. And the cistern doubles as a heat sink when the sun hits that and, and it keeps the water in the masonry warm, and if we have a lean-to greenhouse against that, on a real cold day, heat ought to radiate from that heat sink back into the greenhouse, basically to uh, operate the greenhouse without any outside source of heat. And I believe it's ready.